John Taffer brings his lifetime of experience managing bars to save establishments that are on the verge of shutting down on his reality show, Bar Rescue. But despite his efforts, some bars still go under. Here are some of the bars that didn't survive, even after being rescued. Weber's Place in Reseda, California was a strip club before entrepreneur Kervin Clinton bought it in 2007 to turn it into a place that focused on live music. He wasn't making enough money, and on top of that, his employees were stealing some of the money he did have. Clinton was thousands of dollars in debt when he called for John Taffer's help. Taffer took down any decor that still remained from when the bar was a strip club, like giant red lips that opened up to the kitchen. He also set up a closed-circuit television system so that Clinton could keep an eye on his staff at any given time. He wanted the bar to lose its identity as a live music place because some of the best live music spots, such as the Troubadour, were just a few blocks away on Sunset Boulevard. Taffer brought in a Caribbean theme as an ode to Clinton's Caribbean roots and renamed the place Weber's Rum Bar & Grill. Unfortunately, the bar was not able to maintain the standards set by Taffer. According to Bar Rescue Updates, patrons complained of poor service and not being able to get most things listed on the menu. A year after the episode was aired in 2012, the bar closed. Angel Sports Bar in Corona, California was losing $4,000 a month before John Taffer and his crew came to save it in 2011. It shared a name with a strip club next door. The building was unwelcoming and the interior dirty. The food was bad, the credit card machine didn't work, and it cost $6 in fees for a customer to withdraw from the ATM. Since it catered to a biking community, the sight of motorcycles parked outside the bar was common. As Taffer pointed out, you know what our research shows? Women over 34, if there's three or more motorcycles in front of a bar, 65% of them will not go in. Taffer rebranded the bar as a whiskey bar and changed the name to Rax Billiards and Bourbon. He renovated the interior to include a lounge area and billiard tables and set up a credit card terminal. To avoid the sight of bikes out front, he put up a no-parking board. The bar remained afloat until August 2015, when a stabbing incident took place outside the premises. It dampened the traffic, and the bar ultimately shut down. In 2019, a fire destroyed the building. And it wasn't an accident, the Corona Fire Department reported. Sean Colwell founded Albuquerque, New Mexico's The Sand Bar Brewery & Grill, a beach-themed bar with its own volleyball court, in August 2017. He had borrowed $60,000 from Mike Martinez and his team of investors, but he never paid it back. Though Colwell was adamant that he owned a percentage of the bar, when Taffer confronted him about it, he had no proof. It became apparent to Taffer that the bar was losing money mainly because of Colwell's poor management skills. He was fired and the rest of the staff was trained by mixologist Amy Kofsky and chef Jason Santos. Taffer renamed it Playa Island Bar and redid it in a way that every piece of decor shouted beach. The cocktail menu included a shareable, large-format frozen drink and jello shots, targeting groups of people that came in together to play volleyball. In the weeks following its August 2019 rescue, the bar seemed to do well, seeing a consistent increase in sales. But according to Bar Rescue Updates, the bar reverted to its old name after taking a poll on social media. While it remains unclear exactly why, the bar shut down by November of the same year. New England's Ale House in Palm Harbor, Florida was almost a million dollars in debt before Taffer and his team rescued it in 2019. Owner Tara Cook was quite desperate to get it back on track. She told Taffer that she could lose the bar, her home, and her truck if it failed. The issue was poor management. The staff complained that the manager verbally assaulted them. Taffer took care of that by having Cook give the manager an ultimatum. Everything I have is on the line, and I need you on board a thousand percent. Taffer renamed the bar Das Brauhaus and had the interior redone to look like a German beer house. Award-winning mixologist Mia Mastriani and chef Michael Ferraro were brought in to train the staff. A beer cocktail and a beer cheeseburger were included in the menu. The bar got positive reviews after the rescue, and sales went up by 39%. However, Bar Rescue Updates reports Cook decided to close the bar on Mother's Day 2019, as she found it hard to manage the place as a single mom with two kids going through a divorce. Lonnie Walker launched Chicago's underground Wonder Bar in 1989 as a place for live music. She herself performed there four nights a week. 
In 2011, the bar was forced to move to another location, and the rent in the affluent North River neighborhood was astronomically higher. Walker soon found herself more than $500,000 in debt. Walker still performed at the bar without realizing that her music was outdated and not doing much good for the business. When Taffer spilled the truth, Walker did not take it well, resisting any change that the consultant suggested. So you're going to attack me personally because I'm attacking your business? Is that, so you're is attacking, that weird, right? You're attacking me. Taffer's biggest challenge was to convince Walker that the music didn't work, the decor was unsophisticated, and the menu's frozen pizza was subpar. Walker did finally come on board, so Taffer renovated the interiors and changed the name to Clear Bar. The changes only stayed for a while, the Clear Bar name was dropped, and DNA Info reports Walker resumed performing there soon after the rescue. She was still not able to pay her monthly rent of $18,000 a month and had to close in 2017. Adam Shorter quit a career in finance to get into the bar business. He hoped to make more money to help pay his sister's medical bills. He sold his house and used all his retirement money as an initial investment. He employed family members at Island Bar & Grill in Blue Island, Illinois. While it seemed like a sweet family affair, the big issue was that none of them had any prior experience in the restaurant industry. Shorter knew that some members of his staff were costing his bar a lot of money, but he couldn't get himself to fire them until Taffer's team intervened in 2016. Shorter put his sentiments aside and let a few go. It was an important step if he wanted to make money and clear a $400,000 debt. The place was redesigned with a trendy downtown vibe and the name was changed to Island Lounge. Six weeks after the relaunch, the bar saw a 10% increase in sales. Two years later, there was a shooting incident outside the bar that involved one of the bouncers. The bar's license was revoked and it was forced to shut down, reports CBS Chicago. Lickety Split in Philadelphia was $110,000 in debt and at the risk of closing when management approached John Taffer and his team to save it. Taffer found owner Tom Gaylord, a former detective, drunk and disrespectful to his staff. The bar, located in a prime location filled with a heavy tourist crowd, had subpar food and drinks. Their beers were stored at a much higher temperature than they should be. The refrigerator was filled with old pizza dough, raw chicken, and sausage that had started smelling. Taffer redid the interiors, turning the two-story space into two different concepts. The lower level was called Alleged Pizza and & Bar and featured a pizza station right by the window. The upper level was called Second State Lounge and had an entirely different menu. He also introduced Gaylord to a doctor who specialized in post-traumatic stress to help him with his drinking problem. While the episode had a happily ever after ending, the bar didn't. Most of the decor at Alleged Pizza was taken down soon after the rescue. According to the Philadelphia Inquirer, the upper level was converted into a space for live entertainment. A year after Taffer's rescue, in 2015, the place closed down. With its access to Lake Marie, Dirty Rooster in Antioch, Illinois drew boating enthusiasts in summer and snowmobile enthusiasts in winter. Despite the place being abuzz almost all year round, it was losing up to $4,000 a month. Taffer came to the bar's rescue after a call from Rob Hoffman, who co-owned the bar along with two others. Hoffman lived right above the bar and clearly had a drinking problem. When drunk, he gave away free drinks to customers, costing the business a lot of money. Taffer connected Hoffman to a counselor and gave him a second chance to prove he could manage the bar. The concept was changed to reflect a lakeside hangout spot. Renamed Lake Marie Lodge, the dull gray walls were changed to look like they were made of wood. A boat-shaped promotional platform was set up right at the entrance to pull the crowd in. A little over a month after Taffer's rescue, food and beverage sales were up by 70 percent. Hoffman eventually went back to his old ways, reports the Gazette Review. The bar got rid of the special cocktails the staff was trained to make and received several negative Google reviews about service, furniture, and beverage quality. The bar closed, and a bait-and-tackle shop now stands in its place. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more MASH videos about restaurants and bars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.